Thank you, Alicia and Sewan, for making that uh, praise and worship song work. I feel like in the context of our worship, I, I forget that so many of these contemporary praise and worship songs, at least for, for men, are written for, you know, high tenors. And so I find myself just like squeezing my uh, baritone vocal cords to try to make that work. <laughs> anyway, so you can hear it in my voice. Let us move on to the announcements. We have... Uh, in addition to our Potluck Fellowship outside, I want to announce that today is our last Sunday in worship with Alicia Emerson. She is going to her home church of La Cunada Presbyterian, and she's going to be taking on a new position there. So we are so sorry to see you go, but we're glad that you get to go be with your family, be with your friends, be with your community um, that is so poured into you. So all the best of luck. We, we do have cake so we have a cake to celebrate Alicia that is outside right now. So please do stay for cake. Um, and uh, we will also be collecting a love offering for Alicia to send her out with uh, before the service wraps uh, this morning. All right. Next Sunday, it's going to be an eventful day in the life of our church. Uh, I'm going to stumble through an all-German sermon that is currently being translated for us by Petra Schurmann as she is on her way to Germany. Uh, we are also going to be baptizing John Luke next Sunday, uh, so I hope that you all come out for that. Um, it's going to be a, a wonderful day in worship. Uh, if anybody has lederhosen, I challenge you to wear them to church on Sunday. All right, um, at 3 p.m. on that same day, July 31st, if you hadn't uh, yet had too much of a dose of me, uh, we're going to be, I'm going to be fully ordained finally as a United Methodist elder in full connection on July 31st at 3 p.m. Uh, it's going to be exciting. I'm sorry if I'm a little bit dragging this morning. I'm kind of tired. Um, it's going to be a wonderful day. People from kind of all over my life are going to be there in this side chapel there at First United Methodist Pasadena, and I would love if you guys came as well. Um, you are more than welcome. We're going to have drinks and hors d'oeuvres at our house after the event, so at least come for that. 3 p.m. All right. The Sunday after next, so the first Sunday of August, we're going to be having a closing celebration for the art gallery that we've been hosting for the summer, and we're going to have some panel discussions with the artists, which I'm really looking forward to. Because as you probably sense, where art is exhibited has something to do with what the art t tends to be about, right? There's this conversation about context um, and content. And a lot of the artists who have shared their work aren't, uh, don't, would not identify as church-going types. And yet here, their art has been enriching and challenging the, the worshiping life of a real community. And so we're going to be talking about that experience for them, what it's been like hosting their work at a church, what their work means to them, um, and what it's been like having it out in public. So please do come to that. It's going to be a, a we're, again, we're figuring out how to do this as we do it, but uh, I think this is going to be very exciting, and Jay and I are going to moderate this discussion with the artists. All right. Uh, thank you to all of you who have been supporting the church. Uh, we are heading into the fall very soon, we can't believe it, um, which means that you're going to be hearing more from me about everybody's favorite topic, stewardship. Which, hold on, I need to make that a little more epic. Stewardship. Fall, that didn't work either, did it? Falls on the ears with a thud, right? And yet, something happens with us, with our lives, when we decide to commit a portion of our finite resources for the work of God as best as we can humanly make sure that our resources are doing God's work. In other words, something happens when we carve into a little bit of the freedom that money promises us, and we give that freedom away to build up others in the name of the God who builds others up. And so though it might seem like an extraction, there's a lot of... Um, this is the moment, right, in the life of church that's always made fun of in shows like Rick and Morty and The Simpsons, you know, they pass the offering plate. But in truth, the reason that we, that we give in church, the reason that we give to God, is because something happens to us when we give. First of all, we take an interest in where our money goes and what our money is doing, but also we find ourselves caught up even more in the life of a worshiping community that is trying to do the will of God in the world. 
and we find we have something to say about what we sense the will of God might be. In other words, when we give to the church, we get more involved in the church. And I'm really curious, friends, what might happen if we as a community, with all these new things that are beginning to happen, were to get just a little bit more involved. So, more on that in the coming weeks. Are there any other announcements for the good of the church this morning? Threats? <laughs> Snide remarks? Words of prophecy? Seeing none, let us continue in worship.